tuning in to the online broadcast network, AfterBuzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries and your number one source for after show entertainment. Oh, AfterBuzz TV. After Buzz TV. The destination for TV superfans. Producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows. Interviewing celebrities and showrunners. And bringing you behind the scenes exclusives. All thanks to E! Entertainment's Maria Menounos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! Hello, After Buzz fans, and welcome to another episode of Creators and Showrunners. I'm your host today, Katie Cullen, and with me is the fantastic and incredibly spooky Carl Schaefer. How are you doing Hello. today? Uh, I'm doing good today. I'm doing great. All right. Well, let's get right into it. Okay. Why did you decide to go into the industry? What got you into this? What got me into filmmaking? Yes. Um, I always liked telling stories, and I was a photographer um, and writer, like, you know, and was the audiovisual nerd in school uh, on the high school paper and um, things like that. And um, when I was in high school, I made a couple of short films and uh, got a chance to go tour USC film school. Nice. Um, and so I applied to USC film school. I didn't get in the first couple of times I applied, but I, I went to junior college and then I transferred just to get into USC. And then I took as many classes as I could in the film department. Um, and eventually took a class from one of the teachers who was on the selection committee and he got me in. And, um, that, I mean, from, Probably from the time I was 19 till today, pretty much every day I'm thinking about something to do with filmmaking, movies. I just enjoy storytelling. So this has been a lifelong ambition then? Pretty much, yeah, pretty much. Uh, um, you know, it, it, I was going to be a, more a photographer and was more visually oriented and thought I'd be a cinematographer and didn't really think I had the discipline to be a writer. Um, but then the opportunity came up and... Um, I wrote a, a script called What I Did to the President's Daughter, uh, which was my first script that I sold by direct mail. Do uh, I want to know what that was about? It was, it was a, it's a great premise for a movie. Uh, it was about the 18-year-old daughter of the president running away from home on her birthday and evading the president and the Secret Service and the news media. And she runs into these young punk rocker guys that help her hide out from everybody. Um, and so it's like a romantic comedy. Okay. Right. But the title's a little pr more provocative these yeah. days uh, than it that used was, to be. That, that used was to be a funny idea. Thinking. The president's daughter missing for the night. You know, it was very Roman holiday. Today it would be like, you know, some uh, horrific thriller. Liam, uh, with Neeson, Liam Neeson is the president. It. Right. Yeah. <laughs> with know. his very particular set of skills. Right. Taken what I've done to the president's daughter. Taken um, for the yeah, White House. Exactly. Exactly. So I just have been very fortunate to get to do something that I want to do that, that involves both the visual side, photography, and uh, um, the writing side. Nice. Well, and looking at your track record, it looks like most of your shows are sci-fi, preternatural, supernatural in some vein. What got you interested in that? Um, money, because that's the ones that they said yes to. Um, what I'm really interested in is telling stories about people. Why do people behave the way they do? That's what I'm fascinated by. Um, and, you know, there's so much of the businesses genre. I, the first show I did wasn't genre at all. It was called TV 101, and it was about mm -hmm. a high school newspaper that converted to doing a video newscast. Um, and that's the type of stories that I enjoyed doing. But then I did Erie, Indiana, which was like a lot of people's favorite show when they were kids. And it's a lot of those people have grown up now to be uh, TV executives and uh, they want to see, you know, some version of that show from me. Um, so, you know, the uh, the genre part of it is uh, it's a great storytelling medium because you have so much more flexibility than you do telling stories in the real world. And there's so much more opportunity to use metaphor and to talk about real human behavior. I mean, because to me, Z Nation, you know, is not so much about zombies they're part of it but it's really about the human beings and their interactions with each other and how people react in a in a pressure cooker environment well without them we wouldn't have a show we'd just be watching zombies that's, shamble everywhere that's true that's true they're they're which you know someday there may be a channel a whole channel like that of just watching shambling 
zombies. It's called reality TV. Yeah, and it I, would probably do okay because people are so into zombies. I think you could you could get some sort of rating just tossing anything out there with that name on it. So let's talk a little bit about Z Nation then. Okay. We know you're in the writer's room for season two. Yes, seen we the are. Seen tweets, seen some of the pictures. Can you tell us anything about season two? Uh, it's going to be great uh, to start with. It's going to be uh, different than people expect. I think, you know, in some ways they'll be more of the same. They're still on a mission. They're still trying to get Murphy to California. They're going to take a huge detour uh, this upcoming year. Um, what with the nuclear apocalypse and all that? Yeah, most of them make it through. Uh, you know, I'm not going to say who, who doesn't quite make it through or who does or who lives and who dies. I mean, I think um, everyone will be surprised when they see uh, the, the season premiere, what happens. Uh, and uh, um, we may have uh, like some a lot of new cast members for people to see. So. Well, you certainly surprised us with the season finale. Will we get to see Murphy crazier. without a face? Hmm? What's that? Will we get to see Murphy without a face? Without a face? Um, no, he's still got a face in this episode, in, in this season coming up, I think. Um, but you will see the new Murphy. Um, he's definitely got an, um, some new shades to him. And um, he's up to a lot of no good uh, this season. Um, and is, you know, has his own plans. Uh, for the future. Speaking of plans, I've read that you have a five-year plan for the show. Is that still in place? Has it gotten longer? Have you had to change it? Well, it's certainly it's changed and evolved some, but a lot of the basic arcs, I think, are, are so far, you know, we're only through season one of it, um, into season two are, you know, pretty much what uh, we laid out, you know, as to where to go. Um, you know, each season is very different from the season before. And the show, when you get, you know, uh, The Walking Dead, fantastic show, is very, but they're still very much, it's very much the same show it was in the first season, you know. Uh, Z Nation is going to be a totally different thing. By the time we get to season five, um, you know, you're going to be watching a highly evolved version of the show. That um, sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah, it seems it's a lot more fun to, to work on, certainly. And... Um, and because we sort of have a, you know, we don't have a tight uh, plan, five-year plan, but because we kind of know um, where we're going with it, uh, we know that'll work. So it le gives us a lot of leeway getting from here to there because we know the marks we want to hit. Um, and it, the show gets pretty crazy getting, you know, trying to land on that spot that we want to wind up with. Um, well, the show's been crazy to begin with, so more of the same but it's fun in the writer's room because i mean every day everybody's up for grabs it's like we're you know we test drive killing everybody at some point so they all get it's like we get them into trouble and then see if we can get them out of it and if they don't make it out of it they get killed um, i'm imagining so, the actors watching this going oh no oh no and we've had all the actors have come in uh, they're all coming in and you know they have lunch and and spend an afternoon with the writers so we're incorporating a lot of their ideas and um, it's really interesting hearing about the characters from their point of view and, you know, having been the person so long and uh, and they have ideas of things that they think their character would want to do or past history, stuff that we hadn't thought of that we're working into it. So that's a big fun part of it, too. So it's one big zombie family. Um, of. Sort of. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, um, you know, everybody's uh, um, and a lot of the directors are writing episodes this season, too. So that's nice. really interesting to. You know, they. It's good to have the guy in the room who's going to have to be the poor person that goes out and directs these things in the end because they're so hard to do um, on the budget and time constraints that we have. Uh, um, so it's really, uh, it's good. We're, you know, a lot of people are coming back on the show, crew wise this time. It'll be really fun to uh, um, do it a second time and you know get all those little wrinkles and kinks out from being a low budget show and i think we're going to surprise a lot of people when we come back next season well we're definitely looking forward to it good good i hope a lot of people are i mean everybody's watching it on netflix and catching up with it and um binge watching it i'm sure it's a very different experience seeing it all back to back it's probably exhausting um yeah you don't have to wait for anything except the season finale no and you just keep going and going and going it's like uh uh the, they there's a lot of action and travel on this upcoming season. They start moving in the first episode and they don't stop for the whole season, pretty much. Uh, 
There's zombie road trip. There. Yeah. Sounds yeah. like fun. We're taking them all over the uh, United States this time. Yes. So hypothetically, pie in the sky, if you could have anything on Z Nation, if you could do anything, no budget constraints, no actor constraints, no nothing, what would you do? Um, well, it'd be great to do some, you know, giant crowd scenes um, with lots of zombies. But I think just get really interesting guest cast. I mean, if we had if we had more budget, uh, you know, it wouldn't take a lot more money to before we had the production scale we want because we the model of the show we've made is pretty inexpensive even at its worst. Uh, but the place where you could you know, if we had money to spend that would be great to spend, it would be going after fantastic guest cast and getting really interesting people and making it a show where, you know, if you're, you either know you're going to be a great bad guy or you're going to have a, you know, you'll go out as a fantastic zombie in the end, you know, and, and make it a fun thing that people want to come do because they got kids and, you know, their kids yeah. want to see them as a zombie. Um, so Johnny Depp zombie. Exactly, exactly. Um, things like, yeah, that would be my fantasy would probably be to spend money like that. Or, or um, you know, or even just pay our, our, our cast and crew uh, a reasonable amount of money to start with <laughs> would be a, a, a fantasy of mine. Um, so, yeah, it would, uh, mostly it's about the cast, though, I think. The, everything else, we're in pretty good shape. I mean, I think we're... Um, very happy and and even the guest cast we had was great it's just uh the one place where you wish you could just throw money at stuff is yeah um getting really interesting people so what people would you want for little one episode or two episode cameos oh gosh um who would be interesting <laughs> like <laughs> robert de niro would be fantastic Ooh. or um you know, seeing some of these people uh, who would be scary as a zombie. Um, Stanley Tucci? I'd love to get, yeah, Stanley Tucci. He would be very interesting. I'd love to get Kevin Smith. Um, I'd like him to just be a, a, like a guy that's still alive post-apocalypse. Um, although he'd probably like be a very skinny version of himself after starving for four years. Um, <laughs> this is true. But see him post-apocalypse. Uh, um, somebody who's got some expertise in the genre, um, how well they survived. So someone um, who actually gets zombie movies in world thrown into a zombie movie, I, essentially. Yeah, I'd like to see, uh, you know, uh, Max Brooks, like, uh, uh, running around trying to uh, uh, yes. save his ass in the uh, the apocalypse. See, see if his theories are correct um, or if he'd get re eaten right off the bat. I never knew I wanted that. And yeah. now I do. Well, we may, like, that would be a great cameo. If you're out there, Max, you're welcome on the show anytime. Uh, to test out your uh, um, theories of how to kill a zombie. That would be a lot of fun how to, to stay see alive that in the apocalypse. See if any of the characters have read his book and oh my god, you're him. Well, we do have we do have an episode coming up where we've got a a, a guy who collects zombies and knows everything about them and was a zombie fan before the apocalypse and manages to capture Murphy as his uh, um, sort of prize uh um collection uh um, the jewel in his collection the jewel in his collection yeah he that is pin him to the wall like a butterfly uh that is intriguing and terrifying all at once which is what we try and do yeah. that's the perfect z nation episode and <laughs> yeah. in, in, intriguing and terrifying like the cannibals or disgusting we'll take disgusting too any, any that too. intriguing and any other ad, uh, adverb we'll go with it's mad libs there we zombie go zombie mad libs so you've mentioned Romero in show. What other zombie influences have made their way into Z Nation? Well, I think, you know, everything that's out there, uh, um, obviously we're influenced just by all the zombie culture out there. And, um, you know, not just the Romero movies, but um, the uh, uh, Zack Snyder um, Night of the Living Dead or Day of the Dead, whichever version he made, uh, great movie um you know the max brooks uh um uh, books as well even the walking dead you know uh sort of like if nothing else the walking dead kind of like said well okay that we're not doing that they're already doing a great job of that so we we know we're over here if they're over there so we're influenced by them in that way at, at the very least um and uh um, the rest of it is just sociological influences i mean we kind of started from scratch with the idea um, and 
you know, almost nobody on the, the writing staff last season um, was a genre writer or particularly interested in zombies. They all had different sort of philosophical viewpoints. Um, and we just started with the basic premise of, okay, there's a virus, what's it like? And we had to build like, what are the rules of the virus? How was it spread? How many years has it been? How do people react? And, you know, we spent a lot of time just talking about the science behind it, you know, or the sociological impact or where people psychologically would be. Um, uh, less so the, you know, what kind of weapons are they carrying? And the, the normal genre kind of uh, um, questions you would ask. And, and we sort of, you know, wanted to make it like what people would expect of zombies um, and then twist that, you know, go on a, a, a couple of turns after that. Um, and hopefully that's what we came up with. People seem to like our fast zombies that we have. And yeah. The fact that we have all kinds of zombies. And I, the main thing I wanted to do was just keep it as wide open as possible. So that we're the show that says, yes, we do that. Um, when somebody comes in and pitches thing, crazy things to us. Well, I don't think we've ever seen Viagra zombies before. No, that I think I new. think, and we haven't seen any of them too closely. That's true. <laughs> to date, and maybe it'll stay that way. That was actually a big fight. Like, t- talk about a reverse fight with the uh, the network and the studio. We're just like demanding that we see um, <gasps> the Viagra zombies, and and I kept telling him like, no, the joke from the very beginning was it was made to not to just see their reactions to it that nothing we could show you would pay off um nothing is as good as you'd imagine it let's hope um (laughs) nothing we could show anyways um and and it was really like a throwdown i mean that was one of the biggest fights we had with them with and and we sort of won just by dragging it out and and them stamping their feet and then it was just on the air and there was nothing anybody could do about it but because um, we would have had to go back and reshoot and we, you know, uh. we'd sort of engineered it so it would be very expensive to do what they wanted to do so they lost the idea was less interesting to them when they had to pay for it um, makes sense but it was yeah it was a big deal about really where the tone and the humor of the show was and I think in the end 10K's look pretty much sells the joke because it's 10K right exactly well that yeah it had to be it had to be and he played it so he played it really well and there's a very funny Easter egg in that scene. If anybody watch Doc closely when he's looking through the binoculars in the oh. beginning of that scene. Guys, um, if you find it, screen cap it and tweet us both. I'm on at Kiaxe, K-I-A-X-E-T, and your Twitter is? Uh, is uh, Unreal Carl. So at, if you find the Easter egg, let us know. At Unreal Carl. Yes. Um, yeah, it's one of those things. Like I'd seen it like a hundred times before I noticed what Doc's doing with the binoculars when he's looking at the Viagra zombies. And maybe it was because he just doesn't want to see them. We'll see. Um, yeah, Could that was a, that was a very funny uh, bit in the episode. So, do you have any other fun stories from behind the camera? Um, from last season. Mm-hmm. Um, well, the funny thing, it's, it's such a funny crew up there because they're all like one big family. They're, it's such a tight little community and, and all, you know, everybody on the crew knows each other. Um, and everywhere we go in town up there, everybody knows, like any place you go, the bartender's been like a zombie in the show or their brother-in-law has. And um, so it's very, it's, it's, uh, it's funny to see like the cast just hanging out with the crew people out and about the town. Um, up there uh, and and when we're they're filming so much that you know it's like the 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 zombies and the extras and all those people are just hanging around all day so you keep coming up on these scenes of um, you know like four zombies just spread out on the lawn like getting working on their tan or something you know or uh, um, you know getting their uh, um, uh, playing poker yeah playing poker playing cards um, you know, checkers, um, just wandering off into the neighborhoods where we're shooting, you know, looking around, uh, getting in trouble places. Um, You've told us the story of the uh, hitchhiking zombie. Yes, uh huh. The guy who wanted to, who who stayed late and then wanted to hitchhike home uh, and didn't want to get out of his makeup so he could scare. I think about a quarter of our zombies go home uh, in their makeup to like show their family. Uh, um, or scare their roommate or something like that when they get there. 
that would be a lot of people's worst nightmares just to have a zombie walk in. Oh, Surprise, especially if you didn't know the guy was coming. I mean, it would be like seeing oh him God. walking through the uh, uh, department store. But the weirdest thing is like every once in a while we'd run into people in full zombie outfits um, who weren't part of the show. I thought they were part of the show and they're just they're just dressed up like zombies or we're scouting and we're way off in the woods like uh, uh, um, in this isolated location up in Washington State and and all of a sudden we come across a zombie hunting vehicle that's parked there that's like, you know, it's like a... a, a amc pacer or some really funky car like that but he's he's got a he's you know he's got a bubble light on top and decals on the side that say you know official zombie hunting vehicle and you look in the back of the thing and all kinds of like axes and hammers and weapons and stuff and but it's just abandoned out in the middle of nowhere it's just parked there like the guy that owned the car was nowhere to be seen anywhere in the vicinity of the uh, car parked by itself out in the middle of this road so it was sort of like what happened to him? What's going on here? Is there a real zombie story to tell? And and every location we shot up there was someplace like creepy and spooky, like either at the, you know, the old, the mental hospital, the children's mental hospital oh, from man. 1905 or, you know, or uh, the, uh, uh, the scariest one is the primate research, the abandoned primate research center. The what uh, now? Where they did uh, HIV testing on primates. Um, you know, that and filming in there because there's all these cool cages and water on the floor, and it just looks like a million dollar set, but it's it's real and creepy. So, there's a lot of like good, creepy vibe from uh, the locations up there. You'd almost um, expect it to be haunted. Well, you know, we actually did. We it, it's funny because people tell us things are haunted up there all the time, and um, and and definitely like. Well, one of one of the first locations we shot at were were like in this field, and and we're shooting the sketchy and skeevy scene in the pilot. Um, and I'm just watching, and I'm looking around, and I notice there's like an old decrepit concrete bench there, and and um, I look around a little more, and there's like these plaques in the ground with just numbers on them. Um, and I go, what what is this we're standing in? And somebody goes, oh yeah, this is uh, where they uh, uh, buried the insane children. And we're like, ah, and it was like numbered graves so that people, when, because it was like the asylum where they put the kids and when the kids would pass away, they would bury them here and they buried them with numbers so the families wouldn't get ashamed, you know, ashamed by the fact that they had a kid buried out with the insane kids. And, and we're just like going, ha, 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 it was like a lot of, lot of creepy stuff from days gone by up there that sort of, uh reminded us every once in a while we get reminded no matter how bad the zombie apocalypse seems uh some some corners of the earth are worse now so um you could make a horror movie about filming your horror show oh definitely definitely you could do yeah you could you could uh follow behind the scenes of somebody shooting a movie at the uh this this town's called medical lake which that name right there is a little creepy medical lake you filmed at a place called medical lake because there's all these all of these there's there's the present day um criminally insane prison is there and then the, there's a women's prison and the primate research center and the the children's asylum and all of these uh, uh tons of really cool abandoned buildings i mean you if you if you know Medical Lake at all, you would see our show is shot all over in that place. So you um, hit the jackpot for creepy creepy horror settings then. Oh, definitely Spokane's a fantastic place to shoot. Uh, I mean the locations and stuff are great and um, you know are almost a character in the show and it has so many different looks. There's desert up there and rolling hills of wheat fields and uh, mountains and the the town of Spokane itself. Um, seems to have gone through like, you know, 10 different building booms over the years. And they built two of every style of building. So there's cool old brick buildings, ugly 70s chrome and glass buildings, um, you know, beautiful uh, mid-century buildings. Um, so it looks like you can make it look like all over the country um, and, and uh, really uh, play up the travel aspect of the show, which is a, a big thing that's different about our show too, is that we're on the move all the time and always in a different location. And 
Um, yeah, you're one of the only zombie shows that doesn't hunker down and try to survive. You've got a mission. Right, which I think, I, I mean, uh, I think is a key difference of the show and a great thing about it. And uh, props to Craig Engler, uh, my co-creator. That was something that he, you know, from his original uh, pitch of the show uh, was always in there, was the fact that, that they were on a mission, that we were always on the move, move and that there was hope that they are... They're not just waiting to die, trying to survive as long as they can. That there's hope that there's actually something they might be able to do about all of this. Um, and I think, you know, it was, the show was kind of built to order for the network. The network had this kind of laundry list of things they wanted to do. And um, and they were right. I think it, you know, um, uh, I think we did better than anybody really expected us to. But, you know, we got the audiences in the way that they wanted us to. They really knew who we were building the show for. Um, and they've showed up, thank goodness. And so we're back for a second year. Yay! Yay! Exactly. Well, it's been an absolute blast to watch, so we'll uh-huh. definitely be there for season two. Uh, one more fun question about Z Nation. Yes. We've had zombie animals, we've had the dog, we've had the bear, we've heard about the zombie bull that never was. Uh huh. If you could do a zombie animal, what would you want on the show? Oh, uh, another pie in the sky question. Well, it's funny because I we always have um, he, some heated discussions with uh, um, John Hyams, uh, you know, who directed five episodes last year and was one of the writers and directors this year and a producer. And um, you know, his his point of view is, you know, zombie bear. A bear is scary enough. Making a bear zombie is not that's not that much more scary. How you know is, is it any worse if it's a zombie bear? You know, and I'll argue back a little bit because you can't, it's harder to kill. Uh, but other than that, they're sort of the same thing. Um, you know, so some of the discussions like, we should go with smaller animals. Like a zombie squirrel is scary. That's a scary <laughs> thing. Or, you know, a zombie gopher. Anywhere. A zombie, when we actually had at one point in episode 12, and we shot it and everything, there was a zombie gopher. Because uh, we were sort of doing a riff on... Um, Caddyshack. Oh. Um, and the scene where, where Murphy is golfing. And um, there was a whole sequence. It was just, in the end, it was just out of our tone of the show. It was just a little too comedic. Um, but, yeah, there was a, a scene with a zombified gopher that kept popping out of a hole that they have to kill at some point. Um, so if I could have any zombie animal, I mean, something, you know, obviously something like a polar bear all bloodied up and gory would be good. Um, or something like a moose would be, like, they're so huge. They're that terrifying. Would be, that would be scary. But but even something like a dog or a cat, I mean, anything that was that feral and vicious and, and crazy to get you. Because um, we had the sled dog. Right. The zombie sled dog, and right. that was incredibly creepy. Well, particularly considering, like, it was like the sweetest dog in the world that wouldn't do anything. It wouldn't, like, Aww. it was, it was a, it, it wasn't a trained dog. It was a house, it was a pet. Uh, and, um, and, and all he wanted to do was come lick your face or go eat food. Um, he, uh, but, you know, again, John Himes did an excellent job of, uh, it's all shadows. And it, it's, if you go back and look at it, the way it's put together is, uh, um, the only thing that's making it scary because all that dog did was just kind of stand there and bark a little bit in a direction, um, you know, but it's amazing how, you know, you can put, put together something creepy and threatening just in the editing and the sound of it all and the, and the idea of it and keeping it dark and yeah. not showing, you know, that's uh, a great example of leaving much more of it to the imagination than um, you would normally uh, want to do. Yeah, it's edited like a horror movie. Oh, definitely, definitely. And and to not reveal anything, you know, to make it seem like a lot more is happening um, than dog barking left, dog barking right, <laughs> dog looking at camera growling for two seconds before he looks away and starts, you know, his tongue hanging out um, dog looking goes for a to treat. Get treat. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, uh, you know, and the network really wants zombie animals. That's a, like... Usually that's one of their only notes is, can you get some zombie animals in there? Because they, they like those things. Well, Gives you and Game hook. of Thrones are the only ones with zombie animals right now. So, Well, we've got a few of them coming up in this next season. Um, what do we have? We, we were talking about a zombie buffalo today. Oh, my so gosh. I've heard of zombie buffalo. That would be as bad as the moose. 
Well, and that's a little, at least the zombified buffalo, you know, normally buffaloes are so um, docile. So I guess a zombie one being, you know, but let's, uh, how, you know, the money to make that happen in a, a really good way is, uh, <laughs> if yeah. we can figure it out, we'll do it. If you see a zombie buffalo, you'll know uh, in the show, you'll know we spent a lot of time figuring out how to pay for that. That will be a lot of fun to watch. Well, people like it. I mean, that's definitely, you know, anytime we do, we're always so, um, you know, we have so little money and time to make the show and we're trying to devote it, you know, in the right places and, and things like the Liberty Bell. That was a fantastic gag, but there was huge fights about that because it was going to take so much of our effort, you know, trying to make the show barely being able to make it anyways. And then to, you know, uh, add a huge visual effect sequence like that to it and and pray that it's going to come out good because you don't have the money to make it come out good for sure. You know, most of the time, if you're work, working for Warner Brothers or something like that, you could try a visual effect like that and you know, like, well, in the end, if we have to, we'll just throw money at it. It'll look great in the end, but we, we can't keep throwing money at stuff. Yeah. It's like we got one shot at it time-wise and stuff. So, you know, when, we, when you see these, when I, you know, as a showrunner think, and then we'll do a zombie tornado. I'm just kind of <laughs> like, you know, making this hope and a prayer that, that um, we're going to have the manpower and the talent and the money when we get there to actually do a zombie tornado. And, and, you know, last season it was like a battle for every, every effect sequence that we did um, was, you know, 10 times. I think we were budgeted to have 50, VFX shots per show and we averaged about 180 200 shots. So we were like we did a lot more visual effects than anybody thought we were going to. Wow. Um you know, I I mean, we sort of figured that I knew we were going to do that many, but that's not what we were budgeted for. Um better to ask forgiveness than permission? Well, sort of or just, you know, it's like you just when you're doing something because it's nobody had done a show with this business model that we were doing or shot a show in Spokane that they hadn't had a TV series up there before. We didn't know like what kind of crew we were going to have. So it was, you know, the whole thing was a, a, a shot in the dark. It wasn't like, you know, Oh, we're Warner brothers on the lot. We have a union crew. Everybody knows her. You know, those shows kind of run themselves and you can just concentrate on the creative stuff. And this was like everything you thought up was like, can we actually do that? Do they have, you know, do they have one of those in that piece of equipment or, you know, uh, that to rent or, you know, even casting. It's like trying to, you know, we're doing, uh, we have uh, some a great storyline because uh, we get down into Mexico and, oh. and are dealing with the Zetas this season. Um, it's the like Zetas? The, yeah, who are now like one of the only forms of government left um, huh. are the cartels because they were armed, they were dangerous, they were... Um, isolated um, and ruthless enough from the beginning of the apocalypse that they have survived it. Um, whereas, you know, governments tried to save people and be, uh, you know, uh, positive and not ruthless and they all got wiped out. So, um, but, you know, you say, and then, so we're doing an episode in Mexico, but we're shooting in Washington State, which, you know, uh, I love the people of Spokane, but it's very white up there. <laughs> Uh, there's not a large minority or, or uh, um, you know, ethnic culture, uh, uh, you know, up there. Um, and, and almost everybody who is up there we used last season, you know. So we're, we're going to have a multicultural version of the Zetas um, because post-apocalyptically, you know, kind of the, we, we work this all out, you know, to make, the, make it work in our heads because it started with about the money, like, you know, or, or how do we find uh, the cast members we want shooting in Washington? And then, you know, coming up with a scientific reason why it would be a rainbow coalition of uh, uh, Zetas post-apocalyptically. Um, they brought in the toughest people with them. Exactly. Uh, you know, that, that uh, they, they hire killers of all colors. Um, <laughs> that's sort of nicely the, uh, alliterative. Yeah. That they, you know, that's, uh, and there, and it's, there's some really funny stuff coming up in those episodes where, where they're like they're having board because their whole plan is they want to sell the, the vaccine they're one of many uh, this season's kind of about um the cure and people wanting a cure and 
many different versions of fake cures. Um, and the Zetas are an or organization that wants to, you know, instead of selling drugs, they'll sell the zombie vaccine um, to the world. Um, but, and they have, you know, they have board meetings where, you know, they have uh, manufacturing, marketing, uh, kidnapping, um, distribution, you know, it's like you, you go around the room, uh, zombie control, you know, so it's, um, and, uh, so it's like a corporation. Yes. Almost it's at very, this point. it's like a business. Yeah. It's like a business to those guys. And, and a part of the joke is like their business, their, their board meetings are just as boring as the ones, uh, um, you know, a, a network exec would have to go to. So it's a bunch of big comfy chairs, a long table, and a lot of guns. Exactly, exactly. And crazy post-apocalyptic Zetas. But filmed in Washington. Yes, shot in Washington. Back to the deserts? We'll be back in the desert. Yeah, we start out. We do, Actually, this uh, this season will have a lot of desert. We, we're in Wyoming at Devil's Tower, and we're Ooh. in Minneapolis, and and we go down the Mississippi River. Um, we're do, we're going. You're backtracking a we little have, bit. Yes, we're backtracking. We're going. They're forced back east because of all the fallout from the nuclear missiles, um, and they wind up. They head down the Mississippi and then across Texas, through Arizona and New Mexico. Um, so we'll be going places like Roswell and uh, the Grand Canyon and uh, um, down into Mexico and all kinds of interesting places are coming up. That sounds like an absolute blast. I think that's like the third time I've said this, but I really can't wait. Well, it should be, you know, hopefully um, what's also cool about this season is we know who the characters are. We got a bunch of new, some new characters we're adding and obviously we're adding a lot of new characters and killing off a lot of characters. So, um, you know, there'll be uh, um, in the first episode, there'll be a lot of tweeting going on, I think, as people um, see their favorites coming and going uh, um, and new new people showing up and stuff. Um, but you've got a lot of the framework out of the way. You've got that all set up in season one. Zombie road trip, dude with the cure, let's go. Right, right. And this and this season's in, in, interesting because there, you know, there's more people after uh, Murphy and, um, you know, there's, there's actually kind of, there's rumors about the, out there about who he is and what he's like and that there's a bounty on his head. Um, and he's on the run. So, um, you know, many, many things are happening um, in this season. Wow. Um, yeah. It's, and wow. It, it's, uh, and what's, it's trying to come up with all 15 of them at once. I mean, we just had to write a big document for the network that had all the whole season figured out, um, which normally people don't do on a show. It's like you're, you know, you're making them up. Kind of, you're trying to stay ahead, but. Um, but you've got the whole plan from start to finish, or at least the backbone of it. Yeah, and we have, um, well, more than the backbone, we have a lot of. I mean, all the writers are. By the time we get there, the the process is, you know, we people pitch ideas, then we sort of lay out. You know, we have to write like you know short paragraph blurbs for each episode, um, and then like a two page kind of pitch for the episode and then a detailed like six or eight page outline with every, you know, every beat but no dialogue. Um, and then we write the script and rewrite the script, you know, uh, two or three times. So by the time these, these scripts get shot, they've, you know, been, there's to do 60 pages, we've probably written 200 pages of material or so to get to that 60 pages. So almost a fine um, tooth comb. At yeah, that oh point. yeah, yeah, and it's and so many people are involved. I mean, we have there's a, we have a big writers room this season, uh, so a lot of opinions and a lot of you know uh, everybody has good ideas and these just keep the process just keeps you just keep going through them and going through them and going through them and then you shoot them and then you edit it and go through it and go through it and go through it again. It's uh, um, amazing how much work goes into an episode of TV that people just like you know drink beer and laugh through. Um, but we appreciate it. Yeah, no, listen, and it lasts forever. So it's, you know, the closest you can get to immortality is um, some sort of movie or TV show, I think, or maybe next to building a statue or something like that, or a bridge. We'll put up a statue of you in Spokane. Exactly. That'd be pretty great. We may get, yeah, it's just a statue of a zombie, you know, just, uh, they shuffling filmed, down the street. They filmed all of that here. 
So Z Nation is pretty different from most of the other projects you've worked on then. Well, there, every project I've worked on has been different. Um, I've done, you know, big budget, you know, network shows for CBS on a studio lot with a giant union cruise, which Ghost are Whisperer. fantastic because everything you think of just happens. That, that was like my first show. It was like, was set in a high school and, you know, and, uh, um, you know, they show me a couple of models and next thing we built like a two story high school, you know, the interior set uh, that spread across three stages. Um, wow. You know, and it was like things just happen like that. And then, uh, you know, I've done uh, run and gun reality shows, you know, shooting with a Canon XL1s, uh, driving around the country with just like a five person crew. And, um, and now Z Nation, which is sort of like state of the art, low budget. Uh, um, you know, this new kind of model uh, um, that everybody's looking for a way to do lower budget television. Um, and it's, I mean, we've really stripped it down to almost nothing. That The shows are about 90, 95% shot daylight exterior, like little or no lighting. Um, we, I don't think we used a tripod once, like everything is handheld, combat style. There's no steady cams or cranes or dollies or big lighting crews or anything like that. It's, it's almost shot like a- Gorilla. A, Yes, like a, or like a big documentary size crew, wow. um, and you know it's very run and gun on the move. Um, we don't build sets; we just find places that look like what we want, and fix them up. I mean, the uh, the lab for the season finale was a uh, um, an abandoned uh, um, DVD disc pressing factory. Really? All the machinery, all the machinery you see in the back is for making Blu-ray discs. Of movies and some company went broke and just walked away from their plant and left all that stuff behind um, and uh, ripe for the filming yeah we just yeah we just moved in and said well light it cool so it doesn't look you know so it just you just read it as neat equipment cool equipment and uh, um, it worked out great you know it looked uh, looked um, fantastic in the end it really did yeah I would not have known if you hadn't just told me Right, and that's so. It's another one. So we don't build sets. We don't, you know, we just have to find interesting stuff and rewrite to make it work in that, you know, the the locations we find, um, you know, and and uh, uh, even the the uh, the the sound and the the music and um, everybody is working, you know, with really tight time constraints and really low budgets. Um, but what we've tried to do is hire people that just won't let things be bad and, um, and they're all working harder than they should for the money and, and really care about how it looks. And, and that's the great thing about our crew up there is like, even down to, you know, the assistant of the assistant of the assistant in the art department, they are all into the show. They, you know, after four or five episodes, they all, everybody got the sense of humor and, and. And so now every every little detail of that show, people are spinning, you know, in the right way. Um, so it's the passion that really makes it. Yeah, and and the fact that like you know, if we just did our jobs, we'd never get this thing done. So we all have to like chip in and work harder than we should be, because um, we care about it. We want it to be good, and and you know, uh, it and really we, shows. And we need the job. It really <laughs> you know? shows. You've made a fantastic show. We are running a little short on time, so maybe one or two more questions. Okay. So I'm curious because you have this long resume and all these different uh, shows that you've worked on. If you could reboot any one of them that's over, what would you do? Oh, go back and do a, a show yeah. again? I'd do Strange Luck. Yeah? Um, yeah, because that, that show, um, it's such a good concept. Just the, you know, it was the luckiest guy in the world. Shit happened to him. Good things, bad things, crazy things, every day, everywhere he went, um, and there was no reason for it. He just, it just was a fact of his life that he had to integrate. And he, he was working as a photographer because he always happened to be in the right place at the wrong time for a really good shot. Yeah, and um, the original version we did for Fox, um, the guy we cast as the lead um, wasn't really just the right guy for the role, um, and. 
wouldn't do any of the sort of humor of it and oh. um and it that's just where my writing lives and so it was somebody who was sort of fighting the concept the whole time and um and and we would have we we would have arguments over things like you know his character is a guy that things happen to him all the time so he's sort of obsessed with the idea of it i must be here and this is happening to me for a reason i should intervene um and we're doing a story where you know, he, his character has to, finds out that uh, the wrong man is going to be executed that night. And the guy who did the crime is here with him trying to commit suicide uh, because he feels bad about that. So there's a chance to save the guy who's going to be executed. And I'm arguing with this actor going, and he's going, I don't know that guy. Why would I do that? And I go, because. Basic human compassion? That's what I said, you know, or, and also because you're obsessed with being a hero. You you know, more than just any normal person would do it. You believe like the reason you're the one to find this guy trying to kill himself, who tells you the guy who really did the murder is going to get executed for the murder he committed that night. You know, you would believe that you're supposed to, but so it didn't work out. I would do that show again um, and cast it with somebody really interesting and game and fun and, um, and just explore that notion of, all the inner little inner those scripts were really fun to write because they were just a big chain reaction of coincidence and and being in you know how you spin the way life the things that life throw you and the only reason things happened to him in that story is because he believed they would huh. um, and that that was that was all it took if you you know if you think you're special you'll wind up being special at some point. So no real supernatural touch. That's just no, how it played everybody out. Everybody wanted, like, the network and everything was like, he should have a computer that tells him when something's going to happen. No, he doesn't have a computer. The whole point is he doesn't know why all this stuff happens to him. He just believes that it does. And and because of that belief, he always turns around and goes back and looks when he says, what was that I just saw? Was that woman in trouble? You know, or I thought I heard a kid crying two blocks away. And he would always investigate. Rather than going, he never went, Oh, that's not what I thought it was. You know, he he was he always believed like no, that it is happening. It has to he be had no, something. No, yeah, he had no state of denial huh. uh, that that something bad was about to happen. Well, I would watch that TV program. It's a good it's a good concept, and the shows we made were were fine. Uh, it just wasn't as as uh, fun and excellent as it could have been. Okay, well, if you do push a reboot through for that, let me know. Be up for it. So. I think that is about it. Are Thank we running so down on time? I, I think we are, yeah. That flew by. It really did. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you for having me. Where um, can the people find you online if they want more information or would like to talk to you? They can find me at Unreal Carl on Twitter. You have a website, IMDb, uh, that kind of stuff? I'm on IMDb, I think, but I don't have a website for myself now. All right. Uh, but there is an official show one, and um, you can go to ZNation.com. DVDs come out on February 10th, and I Check am... us out on Netflix. Yes, watch it on Netflix. Binge watch. It's an entirely different experience. It's probably exhausting to watch all back-to-back. -back. That's a lot of battling zombies. Uh... You'd be a zombie by the end. Exactly. And that's the point. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for tuning in, everyone. If you want to catch me on Twitter, I'm Kiaxet, K-I-A-X-E-T. Thanks again for coming on, Carl. Thank you for having me. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, Buzz you, you later. later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.